A very warm welcome to episode E003 of VLearnX. I am your host, Jim Cathode. We are joined by the brain of our show, Tiffany Spectrum. Hello everyone. Tiffany, what is the topic for this session? I have been playing with ideas for algorithmic melody generation. Today I will present a few melodies and explain how I did those. Sounds good. Go ahead. Let's start with a sample melody generated by my script. Jim, what do you think? Not a terrible start. It reminded me of the nursery rhymes I heard when I was a kid. The piano, it sounds very natural. Are you not using your synthesizer? I am glad you noticed that. We are using real piano samples for this session. Where did you get that? I found them on the internet. I will show you the source at the end. Great. Now, back to your melody. How did you generate that? Is it a known algorithm or something you created? It is not a standard algorithm. It's something I wrote for this session. I have prepared a few diagrams to show you what is going on underneath. Our starting point is a noise waveform like this. It is normalized to fit the range 0 to 1. Its length will be the length of the final melody. Is this the full melody or is it just a tiny part? It is for a tiny section of the melody. I will explain that later. In this, the horizontal axis is for the time and vertical axis will eventually be mapped to piano key indexes. The general idea is to pick keys to hit based on this waveform. But we have to do a bit of processing to get there. We need a way to control whether this part should go up or down. We do that by adding or subtracting a ramp. Let's call it the inclination. After applying inclination, we will get a waveform like this. Notice the thick blue line. Okay. It is like a 0 to 1 transition with ups and downs. I can already see where you are going with this. That is right. Let me remove the first two waveforms. Next step is to pick the trigger points. Notice the yellow dots on the horizontal axis. They are the trigger points. Let's call them hitting points. These are points at which we hit the piano keys. They are picked randomly, right? Yes. For now, we will just pick them randomly. That seems to work. Next, we map these points to the noise curve. After that, we map the vertical axis to piano keys. Notice the key names appearing on the vertical axis. Is it a fixed mapping? Why these keys? It is not a fixed mapping. We have to select a sequence of keys for each part of the melody. There are no strict rules on what keys need to be selected or in what order they must be arranged. Finally, we map the trigger points in the curve to the keys. There seems to be a lot of jumping between the keys. Is that a problem? Not really. It depends on the melody. If we need a gradual transition, we can start with a smoothened noise. Then we get something like this. Very interesting. We can arrange several of these to form a longer melody. Is that right? Yes. That is the idea. Let's now look at the functions used to implement the idea. 
starting with the function to create the noise waveform. This is called a tone curve in the script. Here is the function to generate different tone curves and plot them. Lines marked in yellow are steps for generating the curve. Notice the use of the function tone curve. That function is defined here. It takes three inputs. The length of the pattern to generate, the length of the smoothing window, and a variable to control the inclination. The parts that handle smoothing are shown in red, and green is used for parts dealing with the inclination. Also notice the use of the function to normalize the output. It is shown in blue. Back to the test function. I have the output plots from this function. Here they are. This figure shows the effect of smoothing. And this figure shows the effect of positive and negative inclination. It looks like the smoothing is too strong. Is it useful? You are right. This is just an example from a family of curves. Other waveforms are not smooth like this. We can also lower the smoothing window size to reduce smoothing. Next, we shall take a look at the function to generate the trigger points. It is called hit patterns in the script. Here is the function to generate hit points and print them. Function calls shown in green produce the hit points. We also have a function to add extra hits to an existing pattern. It is shown in blue. How is that useful? Repeating the same sequence with a slight difference works well for music. After that, we print those results. These are the results from the function calls. Note that the down arrow stands for a hit. Could you highlight the extra hits in the sequence? Here you go. As mentioned before, these hit points are selected randomly. We will not be going into the details of these functions. Code will be available in the GitHub. I will provide a link in the description. Next step is to combine tone curve with the keys and hit points to generate a tiny melody piece. Here is the function to do that. Notice the code lines defining keys, hits, and tone curve. Next step is shown in the green box. It combines keys, hits, and the tone curve. We will not go into the details of this function. Inside the red box, we have a function call to convert the above output into a sequence that can be given to the synthesizer. I don't understand. What does it do? Worry not. I will show you the print results shortly. In the yellow box, we are generating the audio waveform and save it to a file. These are the output from the print results. Notice how the output is transformed from key names to a four length list with details. Yes. I remember these from the last session. I have commented out all the prints. I will run the script and play the generated audio. What happens when you change the inclination? Here you go. The melody still sounds similar. But it is going down. Could you remove the smoothing? Sure. It sounds similar. But the keys are all over. It's better with a bit of smoothing. Could you generate another piece? Yes. We can simply change the seed for the random number generator and it will produce a new melody. Very interesting. How do you handle the duration of each key press? Is it a constant? It is not a constant. We add extra duration to those keys that are followed by a long silence. This is the function responsible for handling that effect.
I understand now. It takes out a lot of boring silence from the produced output. Indeed. Do you have more effects like these? I have one for adding silence at either ends and another for adding a fixed background melody. Let me show you how those work. What do you mean by background in this case? This is something I put together specifically for this session. You can think of the melody as having two parts. In the foreground, we have the randomly generated melody. And in the background, we use a key sequence selected from a predefined set. This is with a short silence at the beginning and at the end. Now let's add some background to the melody. Could you change the background? Interesting. Now all we have to do is to combine several of these to form a longer melody. Is that the plan? That's right. That is exactly what we are going to do next. Now we come to the last part of this session. We are going to make a melody with multiple parts. This is the function for that. It is a lengthy function. But it has nothing we have not seen already. Observe these lines. They define the key set for the melody, the hit points, the tone curve, and the background keys. These are two convenient functions defined to simplify the coding. Here, the function in the red box creates melody with background. And the function in the green box simply creates the background without anything playing in the foreground. Notice the use of these two functions P and S. They reduce the amount of typing required. This is the list to keep the frames of the music. The functions P and S will extend this list with the generated frames. Our aim is to use several tiny melodies to form a longer melody. Here, we can see the hit points and tone curves generated for two different sections. Why is there a lonely RAND function call? Its output is not used for anything. This one. When generating the second set of melodies, we need a way to seed them. I found this to be a simple way to do that. Understood. So if the generated pattern is not good, we can simply change the input to RAND function and it will make a new pattern. Indeed. At the end, we synthesize all the generated events and produce the audio waveform. Could you play the generated waveform? Could you make a few changes and play again?
That was nice. Do you have anything more? No. This is all I have for today. I almost forgot to mention. This is where I got the piano samples from. Do we have to download these files to use your scripts? No. Samples are available along with the script files in the GitHub repository. What are the topics for the next week? We will take a break from music. But I have not decided on the topic yet. Fine. I can handle a bit of surprise. We have used several free resources in this session. Here are the credits for that. Special thanks to everyone who advised us during the making of this episode. That's it for this session. The scripts we used are available publicly in GitHub. I will provide the link in the video description. See you again in the next episode. Thank you for your time.